So interfaces are so powerful that we really have to use a bunch of different metaphors to actually explain all the different roles that they can play in our computer programs. And so one of the ones that we're, I want to explore right now is this idea of the interface as a contract. Um, it's an agreement. Remember, you know, this is a place where two things come together and have to interact. And without that contract, it's chaos, right? Without the contract, there's no point, you know? If you, you know, again, if, if every... Uh, equipment manufacturer on earth made cables with different shapes, you would never be able to plug anything in to something else. So it's the contract, it's this agreement that's so critical. Um, and a lot of times what you see when we look at interface documentation is a lot of information about that contract and how you have to uphold it, right? Sort of both like what you might get out of it if you use something that implements an interface, but also what you have to do if you are a class that implements that interface yourself. So we're going to look at comparable. It's our favorite. Um, and so, and so we're, here we go, right? And maybe this is actually a little too big. Okay. So there's all these different classes that are they're already implement comparable. And then we look at the actual documentation here, right? And this is the contract, right? This is the agreement. And what we're gonna see in a minute is this is so important because there's this huge number of classes that implement comparable. And there's this huge number of classes that use comparable. Yesterday, or on a previous homework, you built something that used comparable. Um, now what we're going to do is actually we're going to turn that around. We're going to get on the other side of the interface and we're actually going to implement it ourselves. But all this text here is really establishing this contract, right? And so it basically says, you know, um, what happens when, you know, what does this mean, right? Because at some level, you know, just if I just tried to uh, look at this and I said, okay, let's say I didn't have any of this text and I just said, okay, the interface has one method called compare to, it takes an object and returns an int. I have no idea what to do with that information, right? Like, I know this is supposed to establish a comparison between two instances of my class, but I don't know how to do this. Um, and so this, this whole uh, text here, which I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but the idea is that this establishes how I'm supposed to implement compare to and also what I can expect when I use compare to. So the implement part is really for the implementer of the interface. And then there's also text in here for the users of the interface so they understand what happens when you call it, right? So this is this, this contract. Um, the, you know, every interface contract has a different goal. The goal of this contract is for us to agree on a way to compare two instances of a class. So I've got two instances of a class. I don't want to know anything else about that class. And the beautiful thing about it is I don't have to. But if I know how to compare them to each other, so I've got some code that wants to sort an array. The only thing it turns out you need to do to be able to sort an array of any type of job object is compare two objects. If I can compare two objects, I can then implement a sorting algorithm that sorts the entire array. In fact, we're going to do that later. Uh, but for now, we're focused on just this one little piece that we need to agree on, which is how do I order two instances? So I have instance A and instance B, and I need to be able to say A comes before B, B comes before A, or they're equivalent, right? They're, they're you know, either the same object or they should be put at the same position, um, you know? And so that's all of what this is trying to do. And you might think, hey, there's a lot of text here. And yeah, there is a lot of text here because even something this simple, right, just figuring out an ordering actually requires a fair amount of explanation. And if you were using this um, or if you were going to implement this, you know, in a production system, you might have to go through this pretty carefully and make sure that your implementation of compare to, as simple as it may be, sort of meets all of these requirements, right? So I've got this. And then even down here, again, I have more um, information about the specific method, you know, compares this object with the specified object for order, um, you know, and, you know, there are some very important properties that are set up in this contract. So, for example, this transitive um, uh, relationship, right, uh, this is, establishes the idea that the ordering should be consistent across multiple, uh, multiple objects. Um, the same thing here, right? So basically, if I compare A and B and I get a negative result and then I compare B to A, I should get a positive result, right? Um, you know, it's like if I, if I take two objects and hold them up and say, which goes first? And you say A, and then I swap them behind my back and hold them up and say, which goes first? And you say B, that doesn't make any sense, right? It has to be consistent. So depending, it doesn't, shouldn't matter which instance of the object I call compare to on, I should get the same result every time. So this is the kind of information that's in this contract, right? And, you know, you, you, 
here, here's another one. Think about this. You've got all these people out there in the world writing Java code. Some of them are implementing Comparable and others are using Comparable. But the one place that they're all coming, this is where I go and I need to remind myself, how does this work again? Does it return zero, you know, zero positive, it's greater than or whatever? They come back to this page. This is the meeting point. Two people that have no relationship to each other, will never meet, uh, are on different sides of the world, can write code that works together simply because this piece of documentation exists and also because of the powerful concept of interfaces.